I still didn't believe who I was talking to was the dog on commissioner. Hey, Karima. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you well. Okay. He's, we're going to start the live, we just started. Okay. Sorry, I was out of, out of any bit. I'll be <laughs> at my home office in five minutes. Why is they parking? Oh, let me mute my mic. Drive. No, they put the car in park though. Babe, fix your screen. Can what you what like, screen? Like, you look like this. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, good evening to everybody uh, on Facebook and YouTube. We thank you so much for joining us tonight on The Locker Room. As you know, we do this every month, the last Monday of every month. And I am really excited and looking forward to uh, tonight's session as, <clears throat> as we are getting ready to get into some good, good conversation tonight. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my guest panelists who are here, uh, but really quickly before I do that, I just want everybody to please, who's logged in, please go ahead and share this broadcast tonight. Uh, go ahead and hit that, hit that share button and share tonight's broadcast so that others can jump on and be in the room uh, with us tonight as we are just excited and ready for this great conversation. So without further ado, let me introduce um, our guest tonight. Uh, and I'm gonna start with this young lady. Uh, I actually went to high school with her. So I've been in knowing her for a very long time. And ever since I've known her, even in high school, she's always been a go-getter. She has always been someone who has just been, always had energy, was always up for, whatever task, just fearless. I mean, in high school, I was like, this girl is not scared of nothing. <laughs> just scared of nothing. And so to watch her outside of high school and to see the great things she has done in the community and uh, how she has really stepped up and really been a fighter for people in our community, including a fighter for women, and uh, I just appreciate her and all of the great things that she has done. And so I want to just introduce to everybody my good friend, Karima Morris. Karima, how are you? Um, well, thanks for a great introduction. You guys crack me up when you talk about school me. But thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. And then, of course, right, right above her, um, I have been, I've been knowing this young man for, ooh, probably since the late nineties, I want to say, and uh, and uh, through through of course music, and when I knew him at the time, he was playing drums and was uh, one of the best drummers in Buffalo uh, at at that time, and um, and and along the way, got a chance to to work with him. Uh, with you know choirs and other things, and then I, I got a chance to work right alongside him in ministry for ten years uh, when we were at one church together. And uh, but all through the years, we've collaborated and worked on a lot of things. And uh, I currently now am serving over at his ministry uh, in music again, and it's been a great time. I've enjoyed every minute of it. I love going there every week. And uh, it, it's amazing to me to, to, to watch him now because we would have never, ever thought that he would be preaching, let alone pastoring. It is, it's just not something that we would have ever suspected or thought he would have done. 
how, but he has really blossomed and grown and developed into a great leader and a great preacher and the, and the things that he has done in the community surrounding his church and others has been absolutely phenomenal. And so I just want to introduce to you all my good friend, my brother. He's truly my brother. I call him that. Pastor Charles McCarley. Pastor Charles, how you doing? And it's an honor and pleasure to be with you tonight, man. All them accolades and caring all. <laughs> yeah, we go way back, but privilege and honor is definitely mine. I'm so excited to be with all of these wonderful panelists. And man, I hope some great conversation will come out. And we can help some persons out there that are viewing and watching. So keep us in your prayers, man. We're doing what we do. Bless you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, they're right next to him. Um, I haven't known this young lady a very long time, um, but for the short time that I have known her, again, she's she's another one. She is she is a fighter. She is somebody who she goes after it. I mean, she she is she's a straight go getter. Um, she's a powerful woman of God. Um, I've had a chance to hear her speak and and preach on many occasions. And I've seen her work in the community. She is one that she's just not standing up preaching and teaching, but you see her feet in the pavement, in the community out there, getting it done to where her, her actions are matching uh, what she speaks. And she's an, an inspiration to so many people. I am one of those people. She is an inspiration to, and they call her Pastor Q for short. And so I just want to, Thank and introduce Pastor Marquita Whitehead. Pastor Q, how are you? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I, I need to put you on one of my, uh, <laughs> that great introduction right there. <laughs> I, bless, I bless God for just being um, thought of to be on this panelist uh, with all these uh, great uh community pillars amen so i'm i'm humbled i'm ready i'm ready to serve i'm ready to talk uh, i'm ready to get it in so let's go cowboys <laughs> that's it that's it i promise i ain't gonna do it no more i promise i'm going on mute <laughs> <laughs> last last but not and not least another young man um who i also Went to high school with, um, I believe I, I was ahead of him by maybe a year or two. Um, and one year, I was one year ahead of him. And, um, you know, and he was talent talented musician. Uh, when I met him, he, he was playing piano when I met him in high school. Talented uh, musician in high school. And um, again, to, to watch how he has blossomed. I mean, you know, again, because I don't remember him as being someone who was like talked a lot in high school or really, really said a lot um, in terms of my experience. But to see him as a councilman now out in the community and working in city government and, and again, to see him preaching. I mean, not somebody that you would think you would see preaching and then, of course, pastoring, but to see all of the great things that he has done and is doing in our city um, as, as working on our Buffalo Common Council and working with city government. Um, it's, just, it's just a really, really great thing to have men like him inside City Hall who can really make serious impact and change, you know, because they, they won, they have God in their lives <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit is working in them and those are the people that we need in our city government. So I'm grateful and honored that he accepted to be on with us tonight. And so I want to introduce to everybody, Pastor City Councilman Ulysses Wingo. How you doing, sir? I'm all right. I'm all right now. I'm all right. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate you inviting me. I'm humbled to be around all these great folks. And you was talking about Karima back in high school. <laughs> Both her and I were looking at each other like, he talking about you? 
<laughs> Karima, ooh, back in high school. She said, you talking about the high school version? My Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, we're going to have some fun tonight. Great conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Hey, man. <laughs> That's awesome. So listen, we are going to, we're going to jump right into this um, tonight. And uh, the title of our conversation tonight, we're talking about the power of collaboration, that we're, we're co-laborers and not competitors. We're not competing with each other. And uh, one of the things that we, we understand with collaboration is that um, being unified is, is a very important part of, of collaborating in that, in that there's, a, there's a shared goal, there's a shared idea in, in whatever it is that you're doing when you're going to work um, with someone. And we understand that uh, even when you read in, in the word, you can see that, you know, God endorses unity. He endorses working together, uh, especially when it turns to believers, when it turns to working in the kingdom, but then also even outside um, in the community and in government, working together is, is so essential and it's so, so, so critical to having success that everyone is able to share in and everyone is able to be affected by and positively impacted by. And so I just want, I want to begin by, I want to use this, um, this, this quote that I found concerning collaboration. And so I want to kind of start with this. And it says this, it says collaboration allows us to know more and do more then we are capable of knowing and doing by ourselves. And so I want to go ahead and I want to start with this and I want to go right around the room. I'm going to start with um, Karima and then we'll go to Councilman Wingo, uh, Pastor Marquita, and then we'll go to Pastor McCarley. And I want to ask as a first question, when you hear the quote, and I'll read the quote one more time, collaboration allows us to know more and do more then we are capable of knowing and doing by ourselves. So I want to ask this question. When you hear that quote in thinking of the power that, that rests in collaboration, what does that particularly say to you uh, slash what does collaboration mean to you? So I want to start with uh, Karima, Councilman Wingo. We'll go to Pastor Q and then Pastor McCarthy. So to me, collaboration is, is truly a gift because if we utilize it as the tool that is being set forth, it alleviates some of our stresses and fi figuring out things that we don't have to when there's people around us. Like they say, everything we need is right in the house. So if we have strong kingdom collaborations, we'll be able to be free to do our gifts and allow other people to operate in theirs for one common goal for the kingdom. So I think it's a, a great key and I think it's a great um, gift. Collaboration uh, is something we lack in the community. We operate too many times in silos. It's not a bad thing to have a church on every corner, but it's not a great thing to have a church on every corner either. That means we don't know how to collaborate. Everybody wanna be chief. Everybody wanna be boss. Everybody want to be in charge. Everybody want the recognition. When we truly come together, we realize many hands make light work. It's, uh, that's simple. Many hands make light work. And most people don't want to share the work because they want all the credit for the work. So when you think of collaboration, you think of how many people you bring to the table, how many ideas come to the table, how much experience comes to the table. My wife, between the two of us, there are over 30, 40, 40 years of educational experience between my wife and I. But just me by myself, there's only 25 years of experience of education. When we collaborate, all of that can come together and create this huge, huge, huge pot of information and knowledge and wisdom. And, and, and it doesn't make any sense for us not to collaborate, especially when, when you collaborate, we find that people are able to go much further when you collaborate. Uh, one person said it this way, if you want to go uh, fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So we go much further together. We're stronger together, better together if we just stay together. Collaboration is us sticking together, working in unity, which is not synonymous with unification. We can be unified. And what I mean by that is we can be unified and be in uniform. We just look alike and sound alike. But when you're in unity, you share a common goal and you try to reach that goal. 
So unification and unity are different. And we need to make sure that we are coming together in unity, like the Bible says, come together in unity so that we can do what God called us to do and 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 be better together. Thank you. Pastor Q. Praise the Lord. I, I agree with uh both uh my sister Karima and uh Pastor Ulysses. The 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 thing that we have to really pay attention to and first go to the root thereof is the word of God. I'm going to just put it out there. If you really take it from Genesis, he said, let us, God showed unity from the very beginning. He showed collaboration from the very beginning. He showed that without the father, the son, and the, and the Holy Ghost, us together. Yes, we can have a church on every corner and in that unity, there has to be pillars. Yes, it requires it to be a gift, absolutely. But if we do not be selfless, then it's not going to come together. And I believe that one of the greatest hindrances that we have, as uh, Pastor uh, Wingo said, is we have all this uh, years together, but separately, we're really nothing. We're powerless. What greater iron sharpens iron that we could have if we act actually come together and collaborate. If we take it to the root, as I said again, he said, let us, and if you start with him and we really get ourselves you know, out the way, then we can bring our community back together. That's what collaboration means to me. Yeah, Pastor Charles. I am in agreement. Um, Pastor Q, you took it right off off my computer screen, Genesis chapter one, verse 26, that whole piece there shows and it shows that they're of the collaboration of the Godhead. Um, I am agreement with Pastor Wingo as well, that if, if, if we don't come to the understanding where we are better together, there is areas, a, a good leader knows what he doesn't know. There are areas that I just don't excel in. There's areas that I need, you know, help in. But those areas you may have expertise in. Why not us come together and um, and and strengthen one another? Where okay, I know that um, my area is not so great, so I need to lean on you in order to make the whole um, um, stronger. But too many of us, we like to hide our, our insecurities and we like to hide our areas where we're just not strong in instead of staffing our weaknesses. We just hide them, which now weakens us as a whole. If I need to collaborate, I, I give a perfect example. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kareem, but let me throw this out there. There, there was an incident that just happened this, this, this week. And I reached out to Sister Karima and I said, listen, I need your help in this area. And she's like, well, this is what you can do. This is what I like. Whoa, that's not my area. That's why I'm coming to you because this is your area. And she's like, I got it. She ran with the ball and the thing turned around because that's what she does. That's her area. I could have been like, yo, I'm the big dog on campus, the big pastor, blah, blah, blah. And the, the thing would have not been that successful if I wouldn't have just leaned on the person who works in that expertise. So if we can collaborate together, you know, Pastor Wingo said, many hands make a light work. I, I'm all for that. I, I'm just looking for the hands. Where are the hands at? Where, where are the hands? Where are the people that want to say, listen, we're of like mind. You know, we can make this thing happen. I What has been amazing to me in the city of Buffalo over the past couple of months of how we've come together, you know, from the whole uh, uh, top shooting and things like that. But the city really came together. Our community came together and we're still coming together and we're still working together. I just want, want that to continue. And I want it to be continuous even in the church, you know, because churches don't work together. We, we, we are separated by denomination and things like that. You know, we, we, we want to, we're separated by doctrine and, you know, we're separated by so many things that it, it becomes impossible for us to agree on simple things. So 
I'm all for it. Let's get the work together. I, I believe that's the way we're going to really take our city. Man, that man, all of all of you said some some very really really great points uh, as it as it pertains to to what collaboration is and how it how it can really really work. And so, uh, Pastor Wingle, you you said something as it relates to uh, that being unified. Uh, is not necessarily the same as unification. And, and you gave that example. And when you said that, it made me think of uh, collaboration and cooperation because it would seem as though those two things are really the same, but they're, they're, but they're kind of different. Um, However, I believe cooperation is still necessary um, in some form when it comes to collaboration. So I want to, I want to kind of, I want to put this out here and uh, I wanted to ask, is there, is there a difference between collaboration and cooperation? Or are they, or are they somewhat one and the same, or do, or you know, do they go, do they go together? So I want to kind of let's talk about collaboration and cooperation and how do they how do they work together um, if they are the same or not the same so I want to talk about how those two kind of uh, fit into the scheme of things when we talk about collaboration and so this time we'll go in reverse we'll start with Pastor Charles Pastor Q uh, Karima and then Pastor Wingo I think um most definitely even in the definition of the two word, it, it, they work together. Uh, cooperation is the process of working to a specific end. Uh, cooperation, so we're coming together, we're working together, and we have a goal in mind. That collaboration is, we're still looking for the same goal, but I'm looking for some hands to make the light the work light. So I, I, I'm under the interpretation and, and others may have, you know, a different, different definition or a different viewpoint that they're both go together. You know, you, you need one and the other. Uh, you need cooperation and collaboration because if there, if you have collaboration, but if there's no cooperation within uh, the party of, of those who are involved, the only thing you're going to have is a bunch of confusion and a bunch of arguing and a bunch of you know, stuff that we see, you know, uh, constantly. But once we are under the, uh, say, well, the, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree, unless they have some cooperation? Because you're, we have to have a goal and we have to have a mindset, you know, and, and, and we have to, all the things that we're doing must go to the, the end of what we are looking to produce. Too many times we have a set goal and then the lanes change in the midst of the process. We must also remain true to what we say we're going to do. Um, I'm sorry. We, we must remain true. Keep your word. Be a person of your word. Keep it so that we can collaborate and cooperate together. I, I'm going to go ahead and release the mic, but, you know, I, that's, that's where I'm at with that. That's where I'm at. Come on, Pastor Q. Amen. I, I believe that the, the two are necessary. The two are necessary. Cooperation and collaboration, there has to be um, one and the same. However, keeping your identity to know that in that identity, who I am and who uh, Brother Blair is doesn't mean that we have to agree, but we have to compromise. So within that, you know, collaboration and cooperation, there has to be a compromise as well. I can't have it my way all the time, but I have to respect your input. I have to respect your uh, your gifts, your talents, your anointing that may not align. Isn't it perfect how God made us each individually a masterpiece, but he has placed the perfect puzzle for us to come together to be that one that can co cooperate and collaborate if we compromise, to the end goal, if we come together, then the collaboration is what's going to make us stronger. The compromise is going to make it the, the foundation of that strength. 
but the very co uh, cooperation is going to be the nuts and bolts to it. So we have to make sure that we are in it together and we can't have those secret motives. We, ah, yeah, I'm going to go there. We got to make sure that when we invite whomever to that table or to that boardroom or to that community meeting is like minded. As uh, Pastor Child said, how can uh, we walk together if we don't agree? It's biblical, right? And, and, and wise counsel brings much. So in that, we have to make sure that we're with a court, not on a court. Come on here. That's all I'm going to say. We got to be with one accord, not on one accord. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. I'm passing the mic. All right. So um, for me, collaboration is when you have ownership. I'm willing to come to the table. I'm willing to get these things done. But if you hit um, a spicy spot or something with me, I'm like, nah. I don't agree with that. So even though I was willing to come in ownership, I might not cooperate because I don't believe in every aspect of what you're doing or um, we all have the same objective. So even though we are all coming together in agreement to get to that point, I won't cooperate if something is thrown into it that's going to compromise who I am. So um, it's different to me. But it but they're needed to be cohesive. So oh, good. Pastor you. Uh collaboration and cooperation uh are terms that can be used synonymously. And when one cooperates with someone else, they are literally in collaboration with someone else. When someone collaborates with someone, they are literally cooperating with someone else. Again, we've already uh, cited the scripture, I believe in Amos, when he says, how can two walk together except they agree? Uh, the Bible says Enoch walked with God. He could not walk with God unless he agreed. Uh, the Bible also says somewhere in uh, uh, Chronicles about uh, two are better than one, because when one falls, he has someone there to lift him up. When you are cooperating and collaborating, you both have the same in goal in mind, and you are collaborating by using the faculty and the facility of your person to ensure that you reach and achieve that goal versus when you cooperate, you literally are in agreement. And that's where you get the word collude from. When you're colluding with someone, you are cooperating with them. And we have to understand that uh, when persons or people come together and they are in agreement, more can get done. I have to respect what Karima said though. Karima said, listen, if I don't agree with you, I can't work with you. And a lot of times, again, like uh, Pastor McCarley said regarding how we are separated uh, by denominations. Yes, there are things that separate us, that make us different, that make us unique. However, there are so many things that we can agree upon. Where I respect Karima's position, where if I don't agree with you, I can't work with you on that issue. But remember, there's always something else that we could possibly agree on. So let's let's together be in search of those things that we agree on. And from there, we can work to uh, move the, 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 the mark down the road, so to speak. So between what Pastor McCarley said and what Karima had said, I believe there's room for all of us uh, to collaborate and to cooperate on things that we can collaborate and cooperate on. I, I got to respect both sides there because both have made very, very strong, you know, I don't want to say cases, but they've both made very, very strong cases as to why you should or should not. I mean, I, and I like the other C word that uh, Karima used. I love to use alliterations as well, Karima, but you use the word uh, compromise. Sometimes you can't agree because it causes you to compromise your personal convictions. And if you compromise your personal convictions, what what's motivating you or driving you to do whatever it is that you all agreed to do, but you can't do it unless you agree. And agreement has to be a component of collaboration. And if you don't ag agree, you can't collaborate. If you don't agree, there is no cooperation. So collaboration 
and cooperation are literally synonymous terms. But I got to respect what Karima and Pastor McCarley said. All right. And I think that was Pastor Q that put out um, the word compromise. Uh, also, Pastor Wick, I think it was I think it was Pastor Q that put out compromise. We we good we good. Mm -hmm. um, so I so I I have to ask this because as you were all were, were speaking, um, and we talked about agreement. We mentioned the word agreement. We mentioned the word uh, compromise. And so the word that came to mind for me was respect. And I want to, I, I want to dig into this and, and th th this might make the pot a little spicy, but hey, that's what we do in the locker room. We do spicy. And I want to throw this out there because usually in collaboration, when you see collaboration, that there is a need that has arisen either in a community, in a city, um, in a church, group of churches, in an organization. There's a need that has arisen and it has screamed for our attention. It has literally hollered out that it needs our attention and it's caused the need for collaboration because it may be something too big for one person or for one group or for one church to take on. And so it now means you may have to, you have to collaborate. So I wanna ask this question, is collaboration possible if there's a lack of mutual respect for the people you have to work with or the people that you may need to work with to get it done? Is there a way that it can still be, be, be possible because I'm also understanding that even in the church, even when you look at the church, because we name the name of Christ, it sometimes means we have to put the fact that what we're called to do and what the mission is has to go in front of whatever our personal feelings may be. And sometimes we have to put the personal feelings aside to make sure that the need is met and make sure that the mission is accomplished. So I want to talk about when it comes to agreement, collaboration, cooperation, especially on things that have hollered and screamed, you need to pay me some attention because I'm a problem. I'm, I'm a real issue. Can is it? possible that you can collaborate with people that you may not have mutual respect or a personal fondness for. So I want to start with Pastor Q and then I want to go with, uh, uh, I want to pull on your, your, your government hat, Councilman Wingo, I want to pull on your government hat with this question and then we'll go to Karima and, and Pastor Charles. So Pastor Q, Pastor Wingo, Karima, and then Pastor Charles. I believe that um, it's an individual um, decision and what the topic or the, <laughs> Pastor Wingo is, we, it's about to get spicy. Pastor Wingo and I have not seen eye to eye on many occasions, but we saw the goal as to where we were working and the respect for one another and the purpose and the uh, true reason as to why we had to come together to work, we made it work in the respect of where we both stood, understanding where we stood and respected what goal, what needed to be done when we came together. So the compromise there is not a compromise of our integrity, but it is a cooperation to bring collaboration together. So when you speak of respect and we don't see eye to eye, we see the whole picture. And you have to remember, uh, uh, you got to think about how the picture was made, what manufacturer did it, what store it was bought from, who actually put it on the shelf, uh, all the process to get that picture to hang on your wall. So in that process right there, you have to then take a self-reflection on, is it about me 
Am I going to lose my integrity because I went to Kmart instead of going to Target where both the pictures is located? Come on here. I'm not saying that we cannot uh, have a difference, but then not work together. The respect is what the key is. I'm, 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 I'm with uh, Sister Karima. I'm not going to negotiate my integrity. I'm going to look at the whole picture to ensure that the collaboration, the uh, the cooperation, and the compromise still happens. And I can work with people that I just don't personally care for because it's not about me. It's about what the goal is, what the picture is. As long as you respect me and I respect you, we cool. We cool. The, the, the goal is going to be met. I'm passing the mic. Councilman Wingo, talk to me, because because like, like I said, I wanted to pull on you because you also wear that government hat. And I, I don't know, but from a, from a distance, it looks like sometimes personal preference and respect sometimes may play a factor in when you're trying to get things done. So I, I really, so I definitely want to pull on that side of you for this one. Blair, uh, in my role as a servant leader in the community, I framed it that way because when you're elected to do a job, your will or wishes are no longer top priority. Yes, your past informs your present, but that's all it does, informs your present. But when you have a group of folks who vote you in to do a job, it doesn't matter if you like them or dislike them. Doesn't matter if it's your brother, your sister, your mother, your cousin, or your father. It doesn't matter if they just lumped you up in the parking lot. When it comes down to the shared goals to ensure that the people who elected you to hold that office, when it comes down to you ensuring that you are achieving the mission that they put you in office to achieve, it doesn't matter if you respect them, if you don't like them, if they slapped your mother, it does not matter. At the end of the day, you are there to perform a job. You are there to uphold certain uh, principles to ensure that democracy is, 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 is priority. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Respect does not matter. What matters is making a difference. And if you got to swallow your pride and tuck your ego in your pocket, you have to swallow your pride Tuck your ego in your pocket and get it done for your community. It's just that it's just that simple. And you know, if people will take the time to know other people, and if people will take the time to learn other folks' uh, personalities and what shaped them to be the way they are, you'd find that there are a lot more similarities than there are uh, uh, differences in our communities, especially as it relates to community work. All of us have a story. All of us have a testimony. All of us can say, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. All of us can say, I don't look like what I've been through. All of us can say, every time I turn around, God keeps blessing me. All of us can say, when I was down to my last dime, he made a way for me. All of us can say that at some point of our lives. But at the end of the day, as a government elected official, it does not matter if I like you or dislike you. It does not, it does not matter if you, you cheated me or if, if you beat me up. There is a goal and a mission, and that mission cannot be compromised by your ego or your insecurities. So you got to perform, you got to do what you got to do, and you got to make sure that everything you do is done decently in order to, to the glory of God, but also to the edification as we build the kingdom of God here on earth and even through government work. That's good. Karima? Y'all gave me too much time to think. <laughs> I just can't. Oh, I have so many. Oh, Listen, I'm I'm very humble, 
And I, I recognize that a lot of people may not respect me, but I've always demanded respect. So I may not respect someone else's take on what we're doing. I've been at work. I've been in situations where I absolutely do not want to do us um, being demanded by the board, but I got to keep my seat, right? So I have to do my job. I have to execute the task that was given to me and be humble. And it does not mean that in the background, maybe a little bit louder, I will be praying on that very thing that I was in disagreement with because um, we have to remain humble. And if we put God first in everything that we do, the respect won't even, it, it just roll off my back now. Like I don't have anything to prove. So I'm just here doing the work. Pastor McCarley. Well, praise the Lord. Let's see. <laughs> um, collaboration, the agreement there. I, 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 am, I believe that respect, you may not like me, but you're going to respect. And the issue is that, um, yeah, we can, we can work together, but they told me that you have to teach people how to respect you. If you accept anything, folk is going to do anything. Now, I, I clearly understand um, Pastor Wingo's position as an elected official. Some things you do have to swallow. Some things you have to tuck away. Um, but in, in, the, in the concept of general respect to work together, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not going to just get away with everything. You know, you're not going, going to come out your mouth all crazy all the time, you know, and, and there, there I will build, you know, the foundation on how you're going to treat me because um, you're not going to going to. And I like, yeah, you're not going to abuse me with verbal words and actions. You teach people how to respect you. You teach them how to treat you. You teach them what you will stand for, what you will accept and what you won't accept. You teach them how to treat your, your spouse. You teach them how to treat your children. You teach them how to treat you, how to, re, how to respond and how to speak. You know, regardless of if we're working together or not, um, as a human being, as a person, the least you deserve is the respect of another person. If you are doing what you're supposed to do and you know, there are some things and some some actions that, you know, you just I just don't respect them, but I don't have to work with them. I can make that decision. But if we're working together and we have a common goal. But, yeah, I still believe that there should be levels of respect. Um, there should be levels of agreement. There should be levels of collaboration and cooperation and all of those together. We should be able to reach our end goal. But sometimes you just got to. As, as Big Mama used to do in the church, to take somebody, step them to the side, get their life right real good, real quick. And then sometimes those persons become some of your best friends, some, some of your biggest supporters. You know, we started out rocky, but we, had, we got an understanding. I believe that scripture in all that way. You got to get some understanding. You know, right now we're at a misunderstanding. You thinking you can roll off your tongue saying anything to me and you're not going to get a response. No. Let's get an understanding. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Let's reason together because we got a goal to meet. And if we cannot, we're not going to get to the goal if neither one of us can have a mutual level of respect for each other. Yeah. I'm Man, that's the mic, brother Blair, brother Blair. Yes, sir. Let me, let me just, uh, you know, I really wanted to kind of piggyback and dovetail off of what Pastor McCarley just said. Uh, but Speaking conversely, though, I know that uh, we can find somewhere in Proverbs where it says um, uh, something like a friend loves all the time. A friend loves you all the time. But then the Bible says um, out of adversity, you find a brother. Mm -hmm. So I know some of the closest friends I have or some of the friends I've went through adversity with, struggles with. 
And we've heard the term said before, fair weather friends. People who only come around when things are good and when they know they can get something from you and out of you. And those are not folks who you collaborate with. I personally, just back in my government role, I don't hire people in my office who agree with me all the time. Because I believe that if we always see eye to eye, somebody lying. If we always see eye, if you agree with everything I say, somebody lying. And it ain't me because you agreeing with everything that I'm saying. And so there are going to be differences and differences ought to be appreciated. Don't mean you got to like it or agree. But differences should be appreciated so that we can get to the scripture in the Bible somewhere where it says, um, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And that's where we got to get to the point where we are literally filling in the gaps, filling in the intellectual gaps with each other in kingdom building work so that we can have a robust ministry uh, between Antioch and between Pastor McCarley's church, between Pastor Whitehead's church, and between the community work that uh, Karima is doing and between uh, the government's uh, intervention and, and, and support. We have to make sure that we're closing those gaps and ensuring that disagreements aren't always a bad thing because remember out of adversity and trials and tribulations and trouble does you do you produce uh, some of your closest uh friends not just friends but brothers the bible says brothers which is we know is a closer relationship uh than friend good good i i want to i want to throw this out here because uh someone had commented in the chat while we were talking and I thought it was really, uh, really good what they said. And so I want to give everyone a real, a real, really quick, quick moment to respond. Um, and the person said, they said, respect is foundational for all collaboration. No team can get anything done without a mutual understanding that all sides are valid. Yes, yes, seeing eye to, uh, I'm sorry, and then he said, seeing eye to eye has nothing to do with respect. In fact, not seeing eye to eye requires a greater amount of intentional respect when you're going to when you're going to collaborate. And so I thought that was a very interesting um, comment that they put there because it kind of says that you know respect is kind of something all to itself in a way when you talk about to, uh, collaboration. So I wanted to see to to get you guys to give a little bit of feedback on that uh, the comment that was placed in the chat. Anyone who wants to to uh, to go ahead and give some feedback, go right ahead. I I I, I see the comment here, and I do believe that 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 some of this is is valid. You know, not seeing eye to eye requires a greater amount of respect. I, I, I'm going to respect you or I'm going to love you enough to say that I can disagree with you, you know, and, and have some sort of, of, of confidence that we're not going to fall out. You know, I can respect your position. I can respect who you are in, in the church or in the community or in government and, 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 and may not agree with your view and have enough you know, courage or confidence that, listen, we can talk about this disagreement, help me to understand, or let me help you understand my point of view and still have levels of respect because I know that you're not going to lash out. You're not going to bad mouth me on, on social media. I, I respect you, your person that even if we don't have the same agreement there, that as a person or a human being, there are still mutual levels of respect. And I think a lot of that is missing in, in, in some of our areas of expertise. And we don't have a mutual respect. So we say whatever we want to say and then think that that person is supposed to take it. No, I, I, got, I got something to say too. <laughs> That's going to be in response to what you said. And then oftentimes that blows up into something different. But if there is respect for our agreements as well as our disagreements, then we can get 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 still carry the agenda forward, you know. 
but we do need that level of respect. So uh, just following up behind Pastor McCarley, uh, I, I just logged on to see some of the comments and see that uh, folks are asking for a definition of respect. If, if you ask me what respect is, I would tell you that respect has a lot to do with the dignity of a person uh, that they exhibit towards another person. If there is a lack of dignity, there is a lack of appreciation for who that person is, what that person does, and what that person might bring to the table. Respect has a lot to do with the other person being dignified enough to show the folks that they are interacting with that level of dignity, because we can get indignified. And as soon as someone becomes indignant with someone, we don't have to say, why are you getting indignant with me? The first thing out of our mouth is, yo, don't disrespect me. Yo, who are you disrespecting? And we carry on in, in that vein. And I am a major proponent of teaching people how to treat you. My wife and I both model behavior. We model behavior. I treat folks the way I want them to treat me. Not necessarily, I don't expect people to treat me the way that they want me to treat them, but I treat people the way I want them to treat me. So I'm going to approach you with the dignity and the courtesy and the appreciation that a human being deserves who has not disrespected me and who has not gotten indignant with me. And that takes a level of maturity, even when the person you're speaking with or about does not deserve or has not done anything to deserve or earn your respect, because we all have heard in the past that respect is earned. Yes, that is true. However, you can still show respect by being dignified when you interact and engage with other people. And when you are in positions of leadership, that is important because people will feel like you don't care and you don't hear them, you don't see them if you don't give them that initial dignity and that initial respect. So if you ask Wingo, um, I'll, I'll tell you straight up that respect has a lot to do with the dignity and the appreciation and the concern that's shown to another person. Uh, Pastor Q Karima, I, I, I'm interested to hear hear your take because um, I also understand, and I could be wrong, but does it work differently for women? Because because I've heard the male perspective as it relates to it, so I'm curious to see does does it kind of work the same with women or does it you know? And I know we get a little spicy, but that's what we do. That's what we do. If, if we're going to talk about something, we're going to talk about it. So give me your, I want to hear your takes on that. <laughs> well, um, me personally, I don't believe it has anything to do with a male or a female perspective when it comes to respect. I think that often sometimes um, people don't understand the way they present themselves because we're a lot of artistic characters in our culture and we talk very vivid and very strong and with alpha females or however it's going to be portrayed. Uh, Pastor Q and I have very strong personalities. So we might come off as a growl, but I'm good, you know? And so I think that just the presentation, sometimes people, I'm an open book. My face going to say, oh, okay. And it's done. I mean, I'm going to respect the fact that that's your opinion and I'm going to keep it pushing. I'm not going to give in to all of the extra stuff because it's just a waste of time and energy. So me, um, that's just me. And uh, I just feel like people going to feel how they want to feel, whether you do it good, bad, or indifferent, they always going to come at you somehow, some way. It's about how you respond. And because I respect myself enough to put to not put myself out there like that, I just let them have it. <laughs> well, all right, all right, Pastor Q. <laughs> well, let me let me say this. 
I, to a certain degree, um, I, I don't believe that it's, it's, it, it really ponders on male or female simply because it is how you carry yourself, how you, you know, receive what is being said. But there are times when I have been uh, encounter with, you know, a different personality or a different, you know, approach. Thank you, Holy Ghost. A different approach because of me being a female. Now, what I know to be Pastor Charles and, and Pastor Ulysses, Pastor Charles is laid back. You know, I've never seen him rowdy or, you know, out there. Whereas, you know, Pastor Ulysses, I didn't see him <laughs> rowdy and out there, right? But the respect to them both is given the same. Whereas the aggressor, the alpha female, we're going to be approached differently from the gate because they know from the gate, we don't have a problem presenting how we think. <laughs> we don't have a problem defending ourselves. So we demand respect just by our presence. Come on here, talk good to yourself. So when you sit back and you think about the intention, I really want to be able to receive respect. So I give respect. That's it. I'm going to treat you how I want to be treated. And because I respect my myself highly, I'm going to respect you highly. And I respect you to, I expect you to give me the same. And if you don't, then I'm going to be like Karima, excuse me, sir, ma'am, uh, Houston, there's a problem. So it has to be all around. Uh, but I, I don't, I do believe that there is uh, in community, personally, but in community, yeah, there, there's a different level of respect. A absolutely. Yes. I've experienced it. So, Bro Blair, can I, let me, let me just respond. Because uh, I don't know what she talking about. <laughs> I don't know what she talking about. But listen, I think uh, Pastor Whitehead and I believe Karima were actually being kind because there should not be any disparities or distinction between how a man respects a woman and how a man respects a man and how a woman respects a woman and how a woman respects a man and those okay those who are gender fluid and everyone else there shouldn't be any distinction there but if we're going to get saucy there is a distinction there is a distinction men do not show the same level of respect to women as they do other men now i'm just going to say that and show you give you this one little example my wife went to a place and asked for a service. She got the runaround. I go to same said place and ask for same service. I get immediate and direct responses. This should not be the way it is, but that unfortunately happens in life, just like black folks, right? We experience microaggressions on a daily basis. And if we don't bring that to the person's attention, who's being biased towards us, who's, who's engaging in those uh, implicit biases, we will never educate them on what they're doing so that that behavior can stop. I believe when a woman believes she is not being given the same level of respect that she believes she deserves, I believe just like Karima and Marquita said, speak up and then follow up with Pastor McCarley again, teach these people how to treat you. One more thing and I'll be done with this. Um, I was at a place where I was asking for service and the young lady says to me, um, nah, bruh, and it, and it, I, it don't go down like that. I said, I'm sorry. My name isn't bruh. I immediately, and this was a young sister. I immediately code switched and let her know, I'm sorry, my name is not bruh, ma'am. And she said, okay, I'm sorry, sir. 
I mean, she said it sarcastically, but still, she turned it around. And to Pastor McCarley's point, you have to treat people how to teach you. Wait, what did I just say? You have to teach people, teach people how, how to teach you. Is that what I said? Did That's I have it backwards? You got it right the second time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got it right the second time. That that that's that's good. Every, I mean, everything everyone said was 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 really good because um, what what you all have made very clear is that respect is is a key element when it comes to collaboration because it's going to be hard for you to do it if there is none of it present. Karima, you got your hand up. Yes, I do. I have my hand okay. up. I just want to address. Sorry. No, go right ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to address a certain thing um, because we're on the respect thing and it is a lot of people in clergy. I've witnessed and seen and being a woman in the community and in the church, I've witnessed women in ministry being disrespected openly in front of other men by men in clergy and feeling as they have a right to God be all the glory that I was not there in that situation to defend my sister because it is not okay. And I don't care who you feel your title entitles you to believe you are. We got one father and his word does not say to suffocate us and to silence us when we lead in many aspects of this world. So I believe that that collaboration of respect towards women in ministry, it ain't here. It's not in the city. It's not in our culture churches. And I think it's disrespectful and it does a disservice to ministry when we do things like that to women and we will not be silent. And thank God she was one of my sisters in Christ because she will be coached to speak up. Amen. So, uh that leads me right to my next uh, uh, question here as we start to, 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 to wind down because we, it seems that um, in, the, in the church, particularly in the body of Christ, it seems that we compete more than we collaborate because the title says we're co-laborers and we're not competitors. And we're supposed to have the same mission. We're supposed to have the same goal in terms of the body and in terms of the kingdom is concerned. There's only one, one mission and it just, it, it's carried out in many different ways because we have to go in the community. We have to impact government. We have to impact, you know, all those, all those, different sectors that are outside you know of the of the body and and we have to do it together so and coupled with what karima stated and what we all have said um where have we really missed it in the body when it comes to collaboration where where have we we missed it because there there was a time when there there was there was some pretty good collaboration within the body and amongst churches. I remember when I was growing up as a young person that uh, the church I grew up grew up in, they they did a lot of stuff together with other ministries. Uh, you know, in 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 the na not only the neighborhood where our church was, but even in other surrounding neighborhoods that are kind of within the same um, geographic area. But now it seems that there's there's more um, competition and there's more um, of people wanting to be kind of all to themselves, you know, um, you know, being lone rangers and and just like you know, not really wanting to really get together with others, especially if 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 we kind of have the same idea, we're thinking the same thing. It, it seemed to make sense. Hey, let's come together and do it because we can make a bigger impact together than we can separately. So I want to shoot this out. Where, where have we missed it when it comes to collaboration in the church? Because there's power in it, 
but why have we why have we shied away from it? Why have we just not wanted to engage in 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 levels that we probably should engage in when it comes to collaboration? And so uh, I'm gonna start with Pastor Q this time, and we're gonna come to uh, Pastor Wingo and then uh, Karima and then Pastor McCarley. Well, one of the challenges is uh, humility. <laughs> That's one of the challenges because leaders, um, they have their own idea with their own identity. But when it comes to the collaboration, you have, you have to take away self. And that, that domineer, that, that demanding personality that many have, they don't want to you know, relinquish the power. Come on here. If you really be honest, as Pastor Charles said, he knows, he knew that he couldn't do a certain thing. So he called out for help. That's true collaboration. When you know you can't, then you shouldn't. So that the, the out product will be good. I know that there are certain things that I can't do. So I call on. I don't have a problem, as Sister said, you know, humility, the humbleness thereof. You have to make sure that you are ready to relinquish the power as the leader when you bring other leaders together. That's the biggest problem that we have. And truth be told, we as women, yep, I'm going there, have been carrying a lot of the weight and that has become very intimidating by some men. And in that aspect, now there's a pull. There's a pull between she think, he think, they think, and we can't come together because now there's an identity crisis in the power, the gift that God has given all of us. Isn't it something that he said, I've given some he didn't say I gave everything to one. He said, I've given some to this, this group, apostles, some to pastors. We have to remember that we're not everything to the body of Christ. We're just a part of the body, Romans. We're just a part of the body. So when we know where our part is, know your position, play your part so we can get the product out there perfectly. That's my take. If you talk, listen, consider, TLC. That's what I teach, talk, listen, consider, and then we can come together. And when we do that, now the respect is there, the integrity is intact, community, collaboration, compromise without tapping into or violating our integrity, that makes all the difference. Know who you are. When you know who you are, you can collaborate. I like a Karima. Cause then I can be straight, no chaser. You like it, you don't like it. We can we we can do our pros and cons and bring it together. Whatever I'm not good at, she can do. Whatever I, she not good at, I can do. And the respect level comes and stays there. Let's 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 stop. Get real saucy with it. Why won't we come? We won't relinquish the power that we have. That's why we can't come together. I'm, I'm, pass I'm passing the mic. I don't disagree with anything Marquita just said. Uh, I'm going to boil it down to one word, and that one word is insecurity. We have a whole lot of folks who are in position in the church because they could not get position anywhere else. So they come to church, and because that is the only leadership role they have ever had their entire life, they don't want to relinquish it. And quite honestly, um, a good leader, again, I think it was said earlier today, a good leader knows what he doesn't know or knows what she doesn't know. And they will go and get someone with that knowledge or expertise to fill that gap. Now, yesterday, was it yesterday, Pastor McCarley, you had a skating party? Yes, sir. Yeah, it was yesterday. And my brother, uh, uh, Carlos Spencer, went to support Pastor McCarley. Now, while Carlos was there, I was somewhere else. Otherwise, I would have failed a few times and had everybody laughing at me just to support <laughs> Pastor McCarley's event. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the reason why we don't have as much collaboration as we should have in the body of Christ is because of insecurity. And yes, you do have a lot of weak men who are intimidated by strong women. 
Out of the last five Sundays, my wife preached three times. Oh, my wife can talk. That girl can preach. She can dance. She can shout. She can lead worship service. And she is gorgeous. I mean, people like looking at her. They like listening to her. She has much more appeal. Matter of fact, people only like me because of her. <laughs> if they like me at all. <laughs> I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but the truth of the matter is I am not threatened or intimidated by the gift that God gave me in Joanna Linnell Wingo. And we cannot be threatened and or intimidated by the youthful ideas that some of our people have and some of the traditions we need to hold on to. It's all about insecurity. Some people are holding on so tight because if they lose a little bit of influence they have at church, they don't have anything left to influence. Passing the mic. All right, Karima. Deep breath. That was a lot, it's a lot. Um, so Pastor McCarley says, staff your weaknesses, right? If that was something that a lot of people employed, in their ministries, we would be far ahead of where we need to be. And we often see the world bypass us because we can't even figure out if we want to have a choir or a praise and worship team or a soloist leading service. Many times the vision of ministries excludes the kingdom. And so, I don't know. I got a lot of places to go with that, but. I'm going to stop right there. I think we need to get back to the real reason. And it's that good and faithful servant. Just be humble. Pastor Charles? Yeah. Um, I have a two, two piece here. <clears throat> First, let me, if you don't mind, Minister, I want to jump back for a moment. Because Sister Karima said some real heavy stuff. And about women in ministry and how clergy respects or disrespects them. And I am in agreement with everything she said. Now, why would I put that pin there? Because too many times women in ministry will make a statement and then for some reason, senior pastors go silent. And I needed to recognize and to say that the way the church treats women in ministry is is it needs to be really we need to look at that it needs to be changed now I, I understand that there are denominational rules and things like that but we're not in the 1950s 60s anymore um god is pouring his spirit out amongst all flesh you know that I, i'm i'm like pastor wingo my wife can do it all and she's very good at what she does and I would be real stupid to not utilize the gifts that God has placed in her to further the kingdom I cannot sing Rachel can sing the paint off the walls so you know when I <clears throat> sometimes I try I get a little horse past the cue I'll, I'll pass the mic to her and just you know, then, you know, she gone to the wind, but that's, 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 that's how, you know, I, I don't understand. I just, I don't get, you know, and I had to break away from some of my traditions, the way we treat women in ministry. I tell you that the majority of the clergy I have now are all women, <laughs> you know, because they, they, God has placed something in, 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 in our sisters. They have a voice, they have something to say. And they should be treated with the same respect and allow the same presence of God that sits on them. You know, a lot of it has become come from misinterpretation of scripture. We just didn't divide the word right. But I, I can talk on that, but I'm, I'm going to move on because that ain't the question. The question, but I needed to address that, that we, we, I heard you. I heard what you said. As a senior pastor, I heard what you said. And that 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 you are are voicing the voice of many sisters that are sitting out there who are who can preach like crazy 
and won't eat and they won't even let that person off the usher board. That's crazy. I, I, I see it and it's evident in our ministries and we must do something about that. We must do something about it. Blair, maybe that needs to be the next locker room. How do we, <laughs> how do we really yeah, elevate and push women in ministry so yeah. that they're not, they're not, the shadow of the pastor. They're not the shadow of the church. They're, no, you are a part of the ministry. We can't do, if you know it, oh my God, if you know the history of the churches, most churches started by a woman. They had prayer circles out and that woman would sin for a pastor because prayer grew and it became too much to contain. The majority of our churches were started by women and then now we want to suppress them. No. Okay. Let me go ahead and talk about what we're su supposed to be talking about. Um, this collaboration, um, where, where have we lost it? I, I believe that there are a number of, 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 of levels to this question um, as far as there, there, sometimes you have to consider the influence of the leader. Who's influencing that leader? Who's speaking in their ear? You know, sometimes the pastor does want collaboration, but the people don't. What do you do with that? You know, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the people want collaboration, but here we go. You got a wife that's saying, no, we don't need to. So he's, he's, he's speaking, he's hearing, or, or husband, take whatever, whatever. So there's influences sometimes that's coming within the ear. And, 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 and the man is trying to hear from God, but there's also, there's a lot of influence around them. You know, uh, and, I, I, and, and not really knowing each other. I, I would love to get to know Pastor Wingo a little bit better, you know, so that we can collaborate a little bit more. But because our schedules don't always connect, I don't really get to know him. So I'm not going to really, you know, connect with someone I don't know. So it, it becomes to the pack. Well, can we come? Let's reason together. Let's get to know each other. Let's let's talk. What, what what's going on at Ania? Where's your areas? You know where I can plug in. Come on, talk about let's what's going on at TOP. Some areas where you can plug in, and then we can really. I, I'm I'm a big movie buff. Y'all remember Soul Food? And Grandma was laying in the bed. And she was all hoarse and, and ashy. They ain't put no lotion on grandma. And, and she said, you know, uh, like, the family is like a, a, a hand. Of, uh, and together we're going to go and do our thing. But he said, once we come together, we can make a strong fist that will really make an impact into what we, we want to do. Too many of us are, are, are separated. We're doing our own thing. And collaboration ain't going to work until we can come together like a fist and make a, a good swing at the goal that we're trying to make. I am open to collaborate regardless of denomination and, 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 and affiliation. I'm, I'm open to that. Uh, and I, I try to do as much as I possibly can. But in, in, in actuality, I, I also believe that some of these, these churches need to close down. But because of, uh, as Pastor Q said, I believe she said that, that, that we're, we're, we're ego driven and, 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 and Pastor Wingle said, you don't want to release power. You, you sitting up in, in, in there, y'all got 10 members and you try, come on here. You can be somebody's good assistant pastor. Take your 10 members over there. And then this church, you can be somebody's good youth pastor. Bring your 10. Now we got 30, 40 people. Let's shut it down. Come together. The Catholic Church does it great. They're like, look at here. We, we got all these big churches. It's costing us way too much money. We're going to close these five churches in the city of Buffalo, and y'all going to join parishes with one another. And we're going to, you know, they come together so that they can be stronger. We will sit up in and let the church die with two, three members and won't reach out to nobody. Now, let's shut it down. Sell your building and put it towards, but that conversation ain't gonna ever happen. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that because now, as Pastor Wingo said, I lose my identity. Who, 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 who do you go? How would they know who I am without Tabernacle of Praise? How are you gonna know who I am without music ministry? How are you gonna know who I am? I become just another regular 
person in the audience that no i can't do that so i'm going to hold on to my little bit of notoriety and let ministry die instead of connecting and collaborating and let ministry live until we can grab hold of that question or that point of thinking then we're going to always be where we are have what we got and still be sitting around kicking rocks on the porch talking about something we should have could have would have and ain't nothing gonna ever get done nothing gonna ever happen and you know I, I'm, I'm not interested in that I'm interested in getting some work done with some people who want to get some work done hope that makes sense that, that cool. makes a lot of sense um <laughs> everything you everything everybody said is powerful and I, I and while you were talking uh pastor charles i was thinking when you were saying that you know in terms of you know if if i if i were to shut you know my church down and go be with somebody i'm losing identity but the truth is you're really not losing your identity you may actually find who you really are absolutely because your obsession with the power and your obsession with the 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 uh, the position actually blinded you to the fact that your identity is not the position. Your Absolutely. identity is not in being the leader. So you may right. actually find who you really are if right. you can relinquish it and go collaborate with somebody else. You may right. find out that as and we know this from being at PT with Bishop Matthew Brown. You right. may actually find out that your greatness may come from being in the second chair, not the first chair. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, absolutely. So, um, so in in keep in keeping with that, that we that that's where we have we we really lost it. And some, as you saw, I said humility and 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 being humble and understanding that you don't have to be in charge all the time. You don't have to know it all. You don't have to be um, great at it all, then I guess my question is, and, and, I, and I guess I'll, I'll close with this, um, with this question here, is living in the time that we're living in, where we're seeing more, uh, more crime, and we're seeing more things happen in our communities, and, and we're seeing more things happen, um, you know, in our churches. And as it relates to the body of Christ, we also understand that Jesus is soon to come and the mission is still active. We know that at any moment he, he cracks the sky and what will, and the question is, what will we be found doing when he does? I think there's a scripture uh, in the, the new Testament where it says that, you know, two people will be taken in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Okay. And so as we, as we journey towards, the the that climax of life as we know it to be happening um how do we how do we get over get us over this this fear or hesitation of collaboration so that we can ultimately continue to carry out and then fulfill the mission that was left for us in the church which is to go and make disciples which is to go and spread the gospel and to make impact in community, make impact in government and make impact in the world. So how, how do we get beyond this fear or this hesitation as it relates to collaboration so that we can start to, to really be the body of Christ and really be what Jesus intended for us to be as we head towards his final coming? And uh, this time, we'll, I'm going to start with uh, Pastor Wingo, we'll go to Karima, we'll go to Pastor Charles, and Pastor Marquita will close us out. What we need to do, I don't know. I am still trying to figure out how to capture all of the members who stopped coming to church after COVID. I'm still trying to figure out how to reanimate ministries that have gone dormant. I'm still trying to figure out, and this is full transparency, how we're going to make our budget week after week 
with a fraction of the folks who used to come to the church. Uh, I remember about 10 years ago, there was a conversation when the late uh, Dr. William Gillison was alive. We talked about consolidation of black churches. I believe Pastor Baines was still alive. Pastor Dr. Robert E. Baines and Dr. William Gillison, some of the greats. Uh, and then you also have Dr. James Blackburn. Uh, I mean, we're talking about the stables in the Baptist denomination, those preachers and pastors who, who were around when they were S.W. Williams and A.C. Wares. And they remember all of those, you know, pillars in our community. Truth of the matter is, man, a lot of folks aren't thinking collaboration because they're too focused on trying to keep their own doors open. I'll villainize me if you want to, but the fact of the matter is there are people who have viable ministries that have services that impact the community and they're struggling to keep the doors open because after COVID, post-COVID church is different, man. Post-COVID Christians are different. Everything is different. Nothing is the same. You almost can't even preach the same. The messages are different. I mean, the church, it is not that the Bible is losing relevancy. The people are losing relevance in the church. So the fact of the matter is, Blair, that's a deep question, and I don't have the answer. Because a lot of us are really, just being honest, focused on trying to minister to the folks that God gave us to ensure that they don't fall by the wayside. Um, and thinking about collaboration, we'll collaborate. I'm looking forward to meeting with Pastor McCarley. We'll collaborate. Um, I did not know he was a great musician. We can definitely collaborate. Uh, my wife always wanted to be a drummer. Um, God didn't give her that, that, that gift. But uh, God did give her the, vo uh, the gift of using her voice. And my goodness, does she use it? So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still... I'm still wondering in, in, uh, on how post-COVID church is going to look in the future. And when I believe the stability of churches have finally, you know, basically kind of just stabilized, when churches have stabilized, then we can build on that foundation of stability. Because right now it's rocky, man. And um, I know somebody who's real church, he's probably thinking, the Bible says on Christ, Jesus said, I'm on, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Yeah, Jesus said on this rock, he's going to build his church. And we're under shepherds. We're stewards of what God gave us. And we have to be good stewards. Some of us know what God called us to do. And some of us know what God wants us to do with that calling he gave us. And if your calling is to pastor, and no offense to anyone who said anything earlier, I know there are churches who have 10 members. But I know there are some pastors who pastor 10 members better than some folks pastor 10,000. At least those 10 members are getting the attention they need from that pastor. And I know that there are larger churches who, who, who are just numbers in the congregation. And uh, our, 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 I remember those conversations of collaboration and consolidation of black churches. And the question that prevailed was, who gonna be the pastor? That was the prevailing question. Who gonna be the pastor? All these pastors are talking about consolidating. I mean, Pastor Gillison already had a plan in place. I mean, he talked about Pastor uh, um, Chapman was talking about opening up a credit union. And you know, St. John does have a credit union. How if all the black churches put all our money in the same bank, what kind of leverage we'd have to give loans to our people, collaboration? If all of us got together and became Chodos in our churches, how are we gonna impact the community? People get mad at Dwayne Jones for building all of these buildings under his church's Chodo. Elam building townhouses, True Bethel building senior homes. I mean, we have churches who are doing great work right now, collaborating with government, collaborating with other entities, for-profit entities, so that folks have clean, affordable housing. I mean, there are collaborations happening all over the place. I just think that the question that's being posed tonight is a big question that I simply don't have the answer to, and I'm just being honest. And um, if someone has the answer, um, call me and share it with me. I'll be happy to, to hear what you got to say regarding 
how all of us can come together and make sure that we have one church, one body, one gospel, one faith, one baptism, to ensure that we all make God happy. Pass the mic. Rima? One serve. So um, <clears throat> I'm not, I, I know I'm on here with all this wisdom and pastoring. Um, and so it, the word says he's calling for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Some of us don't speak the same language. Some of us don't have the same exact um, teachings or following. But if we think it's coming up out of our church where we holding the pews down, everybody got it twisted. So when people really get back to the mere fact of we're not reaching outside, the remnant is rising up. And they're going to come in and they're going to take over and show us what to do because we are too focused on us instead of him. And so I don't have an answer, but I really believe that we got to get back to focusing on why we are in a church and put religion to the side and realize that without relationship, we are lost. And I don't care what your title is because a reprobate in mind will be given over to those who are operating on both levels. And so just watch out for the remnant because it's coming in. It, it, it's going to be something different. And you know, one thing I really admire about uh, Pastor McCarley is he go out, he goes out, excuse me, into his community and makes his presence known. So I don't, you know, when people get on here, oh, the church don't do this, the church don't do that. The pastor drive what he drive, they got a job, uh, uh, they have careers, they have businesses, they have income, and they're not eating off of the church. And yet they're giving back in their community. But sometimes highlighted are those people who do the opposite because people only see what they want to see. So if we keep sitting on our hands and saints keep sitting on their testimonies and they can't help to deliver the people that's coming to church because we are so busy ushering in what they look like instead of where we came from, it's just going to be a lost cause. And that's it. Pastor Charles? Well, um, first, thank you for allowing us to have this opportunity to discuss. I don't believe that there, that the church is going to ever come to a one church mentality. If, if Jesus prayed a prayer, he said, Father, make them one. And we have yet to see that prayer come to fruition. There, are, there, there's just too, too many things that we put in in the way that divides us. Karima, Karima said it that you know um, we need to put aside religion and focus on relationship. And there's a lot of persons our millennials, if they're still using that, and under who they're not looking for religion, if you will. I, I don't particularly think that religion is a bad thing, um, but I am a, a, a pusher of relationship um, and that we, they, they don't want all of the stuff. They just want to be in presence of God. And we have to acknowledge that in order to get over, I believe, Brother Blair, your, your, part of your question is how do we get over the fear of collaboration? Um, and again, I believe it comes with getting to know one another, getting to know my brother, my sister. We're not going to have one church. We're in, and I, I, the, the Pastor Gillison, and they did that collaboration. There was one going on in the Church of God of Christ, when I was a part of it, you know, the district superintendent wanted to bring all 10 churches together and make one church. And the same question uh, popped up. Well, who's going to be the pastor? Well, as you can see, that collaboration never happened because they could not come to an agreement. So it, I don't see us coming together in that, in that form. But what I do see is coming together in is, is helping our, our community. We can agree 
that um, our black and brown communities are underserved. We can, we can start there. We can be the community. I, I don't believe that if there's a church in your community that there should be hungry people. We, there's food pantries, you can start. There are things that we can do as a church um, and, 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 I, and, and help our, our neighborhoods. And I, I'm under the impression, as the old saying goes, that strong marriages build strong families and strong families build strong churches and strong churches build strong communities. Strong communities build a strong city. Uh, it starts at the home and then it tips over into the church. Um, and, and, and somehow we kind of get lost within those four walls and we don't feel as if we need one another. I need Antioch. I need, you know, um, miracle missions. I need, I need, uh, what's that, bury the violence. I, I need y'all to, so that we can work together. You know, Hamlin Park, we got needs over there. And, and, it's, and, and it's my assignment to meet, you know, some of those needs as best as I can. But I can get more streets if I have more people working with us. You know what I'm saying? So we, we got to come together, get over the fear. I don't want your church members. And, and I, I'm not trying to come after your church members. You know, I get labeled with that all the time. I don't want your church members. And you probably don't even want some of your church members. <laughs> but we do need to work together. We do need to collaborate. And until we can do that, man, we're just going to keep kicking our feet in the wind. And I, I, my, I, I, I don't got time for that. I got, we, got, we got things to do. God is calling generals home. God is calling pastors home. People are leaving here every day, and I am not trying to get up there with my work undone. So we got to do it. We're going to do it. Those that want to roll, let's go. If not, get out my way, because we still have things to accomplish. Uh, and I would love to collaborate. I would love to, to be to hang out with us. But, you know, my pastor, Bishop T. Anthony Brunner, always says, don't, one monkey, don't stop the show we got to go. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. So that's kind of where I'm at. Pastor Q, you got it. Yep. Praise the Lord. Um, I too want to thank you for the opportunity just to share uh, my thoughts, my heart, and my knowledge um, to this great panel, um, co-laborers, because this is a collaboration. We have just proven that it can be done in the walk of our differences, our thoughts, our, you know, process through all that we're going through, you know, together and individually. So this is a start to actually bring forth what needs to be brought forth. But the one thing that I want to, uh, fear of collaboration uh, is going to require a big exposure. And that's, a, that's one of the reasons why there's a fear in collaboration because then it will truly expose who you are, what you're about, you know, who you're truly connected to. Here you go, what you truly believe. And, and when we sit back and we think about, you know, we can get up on a Sunday morning to preach this good gospel and, and but on, you know, Monday to Saturday, what are we really working with? And in that collaboration, that's going to come out. Exposure is going to happen. And that is the fear that we have in that collaboration, that I'm going to be exposed. So at the end of the day, that, that exposure keeps us from collaborating. And those that's willing to collaborate is vulnerable to the exposure. I'm vulnerable, I'm open. I, I can show you my good, my bad, and my ugly. So let's collaborate because I see the need. And, and in that collaboration, you're going to help me and I'll be able to help you. But it's going to take a remnant as um, it was said, it's gonna take a, nu a nucleus of a small group first and foremost and then you have to be honest with ourselves for real for real and uh what pastor wingo said you know he just doesn't know as yet you know at this point that's where collaboration really needs to happen 
because a multitude of wisdom counsel brings forth the strength. And if he's honest enough to say that I don't know right now, then that's when we are supposed to collaborate. He shouldn't have to ask us, we should go to him. And in the receiving thereof, I put it out there. Where y'all at? <laughs> I need help. So now the collaboration, I, put, I, I extended my hand. Are you going to grab it? Are you going to assist? And I, 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 I say, you know, you, you, we got to stop with these cliche. It ain't none of my business. Or, you know, it's not my place. Or, you know, I don't want to step on nobody's toes. Or, you know, he got that, she got that. We, we got to get away from that. If I see my brother falling, then I should help. That's true collaboration. That's true relationship. So if we truly go do that, then let's be real with ourselves and be ready to be exposed. And that's where the relationship comes out at. Because when, when COVID shut us down, it was the time for us to really get in, in his face. Because when it was time for us to open back up, we should have been running to the church. Not, uh, Lord, thank you. No, we stand at home. I can watch it on TV. I can see it on social media. It's a time, and Pastor Wingo, I'm going to say it like this. I believe that this is a season for real, for real, for evangelism, to take the forefront, to go back out to the streets for real, for real, because that's where the people at. They not coming to church because they became comfortable in the time of the shutdown. So it's time to go door to door, ring it. The old way works. We just have to put it into a new way in our time. Go back to the streets at, at 9, 10 o'clock in front of the liquor stores. Yeah, street ministry. That's, that's, where, that's where I'm at. Go back to the streets. <laughs> yeah. Stop, stop. I, I, that's, that's, that's just me. That's, that, that would be my you know, input as to those pastors that's struggling to get people back into the church. They not coming until they see the authenticity of the church for real, for real, with the relationship of putting God first instead of putting everything else that's in the world first. They need authenticity. And the churches right now don't have that. And that's the problem. You're talking about a prayer circle. They won't even get online for a prayer call. What a, what a, prayer, a prayer circle you we, we got how many people i see 23 people on here it should be 23,000. somebody should have shared something that should have shared the, the shared 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 so the more the more they they go do what they want to do they in their comfort zone until a crisis if the i'm gonna be real listen if the pastors understand that you can't be pimp by your anointing, the grace and mercy of God is within the, the senior pastor, absolutely. But you got some higher headed saints that need to be knocked upside the head. Okay? And stop coddling them. That's where the collaboration, because I'm with Pastor Charles. You, the collaboration, I mean, we go pick and choose. We go pick and choose at that point. <laughs> I'm going to help you when I want to help you, but no, you really need help, Pastor Wingo. And that right there, that's the collaboration. And I'm not a senior pastor. I'm the executive pastor at my church. Okay? So I'm the right hand to my pastor. And that's a heavy weight to carry because, listen, <laughs> he calling on me for everything. Amen? So you got to know the people. You, you, you got to get out in these streets. That, that's all. The fear of collaboration is because many will be exposed. And many don't want to be vulnerable to that exposure because then they're going to have to explain all the stuff that they haven't done or can't do, but they should have been doing it. That's it. I'm passing the mic. I think I... I I tell you that I think. Oh, go ahead, Kareem. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Get, you can get in there. All I, I'm sorry. I just heard accountability as she was talking. Accountability, accountability, accountability. That's all. That's all I just wanted to say. If I can say this last piece, because she said something, I said it. 
it's it's an acronym rare i teach it respect accountable responsible effective communication that right there is key and it's very challenging to be rare because we lack somewhere along the line respect we lack somewhere accountable somewhere is lacking Re responsibilities is lacking and being an effective communicator that lacks as well so and then you put in the tlc talk listen and consider which is true tender love and care that's it thank you man this this has been a a, a very powerful conversation we've had tonight um to to hear uh, everyone's different point of view on on collaboration um and and i know that we've we've had um a lot of people who've been tuning in throughout the time that we that we we've, we've been on tonight um but all of you have have shared powerful perspectives uh from where you sit um as it relates to collaboration and um i know for myself i i believe uh genuinely that <clears throat> if 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 a, if a, if enough of us can that get it <clears throat> If enough of us that truly get it and truly understand can collaborate more, I believe we can start to create a, a counterculture or a counter environment um, to the isolation and to the um, everyone wanting to kind of go and be on their own, especially in the church. Because sometimes in order to change a culture, you have to create a counterculture. And it has to impose its will on the current culture, so that you can kind of start to see to see to see some change. And so I believe, and I, I think it was Karima said, and I think even Pastor Q said it, that it it sometimes takes a remnant that understands. It it uh, takes a remnant that gets it and that it is committed to the mission ultimately and doing what's necessary. And that collaboration will start to catch on and it'll start to catch on, you know, little by little, it'll start to catch on corner by corner, neighborhood by, by, by neighborhood. Because, you know, with, with anything that we've seen, uh, especially when it relates to trends, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I remember uh, Criss Cross came out wearing their pants backwards. At first, everybody thought it was crazy until everybody started wearing their pants backwards. And then it became a culture change. And now, and, and so wearing your pants backwards then became acceptable and it became, and, and more and more kept doing it. And so I think if we can make collaboration like wearing backwards pants, We'll, I think we'll start to see that change and we'll start to see now that, okay, it is okay to collaborate. It's okay to work together. It is okay to hook up and connect with people who get it and, and, under, and understand it. Because cult, people who change culture, they just change the culture. They're not worried necessarily about what people say or what they think. They just understand that a change has to be made, we're gonna make the change and eventually everybody catches on and you start to see, and you start to see it shift. And I think what all of you said is, we just have to start. If we start at home and work our way out, we'll start to see that type of change and we'll start to see more collaboration so we can begin to make the impact that we were destined, created and purposed to make. So with that, I thank everyone uh, who, of course, have tuned in with us tonight on Facebook. Uh, I thank you all so much. You hang, you guys hang with me every month on this last Monday. You tune in and you share it, and I appreciate it. I really want to thank all of our panelists tonight. You all were phenomenal tonight in sharing so much wisdom, so much understanding. And, and so much real talk that I believe has really made a lot of people think tonight. I think it made a lot of people ponder and consider 
uh, how they view collaboration, how they see it. I believe that people have been challenged to look inwardly and really take a look at themselves to see where they match up and where they line up, uh, not only with their purposes in terms of life, but how they line up with God's intention as it relates to us as a people and, as, and, and his intention as it relates to us as a body. So I thank you all. You've been great tonight. Uh, I do want to let everyone know that we will be back uh, the month of September. We'll be back again last Monday, September with some more fresh new dialogue. We'll have some fresh faces. And uh, this has been a great ride. Uh, this month actually makes two years for me that I've been doing this. I uh, started this in August of uh, 2020. Um, and I, I just kind of took a leap. I, did, I wasn't sure how it was going to uh, pan out. I wasn't sure if people would actually hop on and, and tune in. But this entire two years, people have been getting on and checking out. And I've been getting so much uh, great feedback from people who watch and people who have been, been helped. And there's the one, uh, always the, 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 the one message I got in my Facebook before I had to create a new account. <laughs> but I always remember the one testimony I got. Um, but this young lady had messaged me and, and I believe, I, I can't, I'm trying to remember what we were talking about, but I think it was, it was something to do with encouragement as it relates to the mind. And the lady got on and she messaged me and she says, I'm so glad you had your conversation tonight. She said, because I was so encouraged and because I was so uplifted by what everybody shared in their story. She said, I'm not gonna take my life tonight because I believe that I can live on. And that one message has been my motivator to say that if you can stop one person from taking their life, if you can stop one person from taking something into their body or doing something to themselves that they don't need to do and they start to believe in their purpose again you have accomplished the mission and that's that's my motivation is that somebody if it's one person walks away with a different outlook on life encourage or uplifted so i thank everyone for tuning in we're going to get ready to let you all go we'll be back in the month of september thank you again pastor charles pastor q Karima, Pastor Wingo, appreciate you guys for sharing what you shared. And so with that, everyone have a great rest of your week this week. I pray you have victory this week. I pray you have win after win this week. I pray that God blesses you and increases you beyond your dreams and imaginations this week. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a good night. My panelists don't go anywhere just yet, but we're going to close out on Facebook and YouTube. Love you all. We'll see you next time on The Locker Room.